Today's episode of Still Single is brought to you by Miss Shelley's Burger Sex Drive Thru. Wait, seriously? Yeah, what can I say? Looks like you're not the only person who enjoys getting freaky with food in a public parking lot. Are you suggesting that one of our listeners decide to start an entire restaurant chain because of what I did with that guy last season? Actually, a lot of people tried burger sex after that episode, and the city was getting sick of arrested naked people covered in burger garnishes for indecent exposure. Apparently, the jail started to smell like a fast food restaurant. Good God. Yeah, I mean, that smell. I had to get my car scrapped. Completely tanked the value. Couldn't do anything to get rid of the smell after we did what we did in it. Even after I had it detailed like four times, nothing could get rid of it. And that's why today's episode is brought to you by Miss Shelley's Burger Sex drive through The only place you can eat in fucking public without getting arrested. Here at Miss Shelley's, we want to make sure you're filled up from both ends. That's why we converted our parking lot into a safe sex haven where you can dine out and get eaten out. We have sloppy joes that are just as messy as your blowjobs. Order our pies and by the time you receive them, you'll definitely have more cream in you than they do. Feeling ballsy? Enter our small fry contest in which we'll bring out french fries that we think matches the girth of your dick. Are you a deep fried, jaw breaking, thick cut daddy size? Or are you a help me, I'm choking on a salty wonder size? With every order, you can add flavor lube for just 99 cents. We have 42 flavors. From sweet cotton candy to spicy habanero, we'll have you licking for hours. So come on down to Miss Shelley's Burger Sex drive through where you can dick and dine like it ain't a crime. How is this even legal? I feel like this is a very discreet attack against me. Hey, you made your bed, home record. And again, it's Miss Shelley's, not Summer's. Yeah, but I wonder if I can get a cut of this. It is technically my idea, after all. I thought it was Bill's. Listen, he may have come up with the idea to use mayo for lube, but I can still patent it. Uh, for those of you listening, please don't use mayo as lube. Guys, just start the show. For God's sake. Come on now. Here we go. I'm still what? I'm still single. I don't know what to do. I'm still single, I have no reason nor a clue why I'm still single, why must I wait? I'm still single, someone find me a day, 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 someone please find me a date. Welcome back to Still Single. I'm your host, Derek, a.k.a. Dare Bear, a.k.a. D-Bag. And I'm your host, Summer, a.k.a. the reason your dad keeps forgetting to pick you up from soccer practice. Summer, oh my god. What? You know it's true. That's why I'm so thankful I got two moms and Summer is not into girls. I don't have to worry about her wrecking my house. Hey, I'm not here to talk about that. Mandy, I noticed you never responded to my email. Oh, yeah? Which one? The one about your bachelorette party. Uh, oh, just because I don't want one. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. What? You're forcing yourself to live with the same man forever, suck the same dick, pay different taxes, and watch Grey's Anatomy until your inevitable, pathetic death. Hoping your grandchildren comes to visit, most of you you secretly hate, while you watch Randy follow nurses around asking for sponge bath, and you don't want to have a bachelorette party before you willingly turn your life into a puddle of shit? Please don't use that as an analogy for getting married. Ew, why? Believe it or not, I actually love Randy, okay? We've been going out since we started high school. Was that also the last time you had an orgasm? Hey, this is really inappropriate for the workplace, you guys. We just want you to have a little fun before you ruin your life. You know we're not friends, right? I'm having a bridal shower with some of my actual friends. That should be enough. Oh, of course we're not friends, sweetie. You're our charity case. Wow, thanks. And before you enter your matrimonial base nunnery, we want to throw you a little party! 
First of all, Randy and I haven't set a date yet. We're waiting for him to finish his residency. Second of all, I'm just getting married, not entering a nunnery. Right. Well, may as well go out with a bang before you tie the knot on the noose of your dating life. Mandy, we're just trying to take you to a good strip club, have a few lap dances from a couple of cuties, and have a good time. Drugs can be involved, but that part obviously is completely up to you. I never want you to say any of that on the air again. Yes, Daddy. I'm serious! I'm not letting you drag me to some dingy strip club so you two feel like you did your good deed for the week. What do you have against strip clubs? They're just really dirty. I, I, I mean, I guess this is probably coming from the girl who makes her boyfriend swift for the floor before she can get on her knees to blow him. Oh, please. We know she only blows him on holidays. Stop talking oh. about my fiancé's blowjobs. I just don't understand what the issue is that you so clearly have with strippers. I don't have an issue. I just don't see why we have to go. I'm not going to have a good time. And why is that, Mandy? Oh, are you afraid of strippers? No! It's just... They shake their stuff in your face, then you have to touch them. It feels so dirty. Like, who put those women up to this? Um, their bills. And who are you to judge? It's so counter-feminist. <laughs> I'm sorry, you think stripping is counter-feminist? Mandy, those women make it an art. It's true. The last place I went to, this chick was doing fire dancing. One was swinging from these silks hanging from the ceiling. And this one girl even talked me into spending all of my money on a private lap dance, like art. Hello? That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's a whole circus that forces women to cater to the male gaze. Mandy, come on. Even if you aren't buying it, you have to understand that sex sells. It's been hot on the market since the beginning of time. And there will always be a demand for it. Sex is natural, Mandy. And the absolute queens that run the strip club across the street are just stand-up citizens willing to fill that hole. Pun intended. It's fine if people want to go to the strip club and get their rocks off, as it were, but I know Randy wouldn't appreciate me going to one. They really ought to regulate that kind of thing. The next thing we need is a red light district in our town. Red light districts are actually really well regulated. Like I said, Mandy, even if you don't like it, it's like the Marvel movies. There are always going to be people out there who do for some reason. Let me just call and book us a room, just so you can get a little taste. Coco and Chanel will take great care of us. Wait a minute. Coco, Chanel, Coco, Chanel, Coco. Oh, oh my god, oh my god! Oh, I, I just got that. They're twins, and their names are Coco and Chanel. Oh my god, that's so clever. Do you think they actually meant to do that? Yes, Derek, it's highly likely that those nice twin strippers we know chose fake names to make a pun. Okay, let's just see. Um, let me just look at my contacts. The penis fly trap, there it is. Let me dial it. You have the local strip club's number saved on your phone. Uh, doesn't everybody? How else am I going to be able to book us a room? Uh, oh, oh, hello? What, what the hell? Voicemail? Oh, weird. Put it on speaker. Thank you for calling the Penis Flytrap Nightclub. Due to our recent worker strike, we are currently closed. For more information, please visit our website. Closed? Oh, maybe they got shut down for health code violation, of which I'm sure there were many. Or one of Gwyneth Paltrow's organizations offered all the strippers scholarships to their dream schools. Oh my god, Mandy. I am not a fan of you when you're like this. The website says basically the same thing. The club is closed because all the strippers in the countries are trying to unionize. Strippers unionize? Looks like you might get that red light district after all. What are they striking for? Are the polls too high? They wish we'd wash our dollar bills before we stick them in their... areas? You mean G-strings? G-force? Parter of the booty sea? Lifeline? Butt braces? Eric, that's enough! Mandy, strippers have plenty of bullshit to deal with. I'm all for them unionizing. What about just shutting the clubs down? Well, then you'll see people rising to solve the demand. Oh, that could be cool. That got me picturing some type of deep underground strip club type energy. Like, fight club, but more boobs and oil. Do you think before you speak? I 
think we should go join them wherever it is they're picketing. Derek, are you insane? Absolutely not. What? Think of the traction they'll get if a big radio show picks up their cause. Derek. Mandy. Ugh. Just last week, you mentioned that we should probably look at a nonprofit cause to sponsor. I think we found it. I mean, the only thing we have to lose is a sweet, sweet look at Coco and Chanel every Friday night. I'm willing to fight for those if you are. Summer, ready my steed. We're going to war. I don't want you to think I'm not enthusiastic, but I'm going to do this my own way. Summer, put your shirt back on. Kate, Mandy, plenty of other feminists have gone topless for change. Yes, but we both know you're just getting it so you can hook up with the first news crew your double Ds attract. I don't like you. Get back to the underground thing. Would that be so bad? Would you prefer it if we took you there for your bachelorette party? Like, an underground fight club? Because I can make that happen. Just let me make a few calls and we can get this poppin' tonight. No, Derek, we're trying to get Mandy to embrace sex work, not get us all arrested again. Regulation is good. I mean, it keeps people safe. Everyone gets to stay healthy. There's regular testing. People just need to stop being such assholes to sex workers. Strippers. They're just like us. In that they deserve basic human decency, respect, access to proper health care, safe working conditions, sure. But I'd like it if the comparison stopped there. Hmm. Suit yourself. I, for one, think it's about time sex workers start getting the treatment they deserve. Back in my day, we had it really rough. You were a sex worker, Derek? I prefer the term adult entertainer, okay? Really? Because I prefer the term failed porn star. Derek, you used to do porn? Well, sort of. You tell her, or I will. I had a brief stint as a porn star. <laughs> I know that term is reserved for just about anyone who does porn, but I don't think that applied to you. Okay, I was the understudy. See, I don't know if you've ever heard of the term fluffer before? Can't say that I have, or that I'd like to right now. Right, well, summer of sophomore year in college, my brother got me a job as a fluffer. He told me it was my job to get the porn stars ready before they went on camera. Okay. Now... At first, I thought maybe I was going to be doing some makeup or something, but fluffing actually means you get them ready before they go on camera. Okay, and how exactly do you get them ready? Oh, just by jacking people off, making sure their nipples are hard, you know, that kind of thing. Oh my god, Derek, why would you say that on the air? Well, it's important to the story. Obviously, by disaster that I am, I love it. Within a month, I work my way up to head fluffer. But they decided to promote me to understudy. Don't know if you know this, but there was a pretty big market for black twinks in the adult entertainment. What? In porn? This conversation is aging me prematurely. Get to the good stuff. I never really expected to have to go on camera, and the pay was so much better. So I figured... I could give up prepping actors and start getting prepped. The next thing I know, the guy playing Bubba and Forrest Humps eats some bad shrimp, and they need me to fill in for him on the boat orgy. But? Well, that was when I got a case of shy penis syndrome. Huh? Performance anxiety. No matter what I did, I couldn't get hard. The team of fluffers were working overtime, and even I was trying, but nothing worked. I was fired. And the world was deprived of the Forrest Gump porn parody they didn't know they needed. Mama always said her holes were like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. God, I might be a bit of a snob when it comes to my content, but I would have killed to see that. Makes me want to rewatch Edward Penis Hands again. They make movie porn parodies? Yep. Why? What kind of porn do you watch, Mandy? Oh, Randy and I don't watch porn. Okay, what porn do you secretly watch without Randy knowing? I don't watch porn. (laughs) 
Night. Porn. <laughs> night. You don't watch porn? Oh my god. Then how do you get off? I'm not having this conversation with you. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm sure Randy probably watches porn. No. He says that it's overproduced, fake, and causes people to have unnecessary insecurities about their bodies and their sex lives, which I happen to agree with. Oh, come on. It's hot sometimes. Which brings me back to, how do you guys masturbate? You must know. We don't. Randy's more comfortable controlling that urge. But it's a completely natural urge. It it's my favorite urge. So you guys only have sex? Can we please stop talking about sex? Sure. We can change the subject on our sex-related podcast. Uh, I'm no doctor, but don't you want to unpack that? Your sex life is completely dependent on one another, and you don't let each other explore. You're gonna force me to talk about this, even though it's none of your business. You experiment sometimes. How? Sometimes we use lube. <laughs> As in you weren't using lube before? I'd really like to move on. Do you know what you guys were supposed to be talking about in this episode? Because I do. Trying to get a date while running errands. Did either of you do that? I went to pick up some milk and some dilfs. Derek? Eh, I'm sort of lactose intolerant. And with that, I'm going to talk to Mr. LaRue about starting an HR department. Because I went there to complain last time and there wasn't one. He's not going to listen to you. Just tell him it's something to do with Bitcoin and he'll get into it. That's what I always do. Just read us out. Do I have to? Do I look like I'm in the mood to give favors? No. Oh, just give it to me, Summer. Today's episode of Still Single was sponsored by Michelle's Burger Sex drive Through, the place where the blowjobs are as salty as our fries, the sex is as messy as our burgers, and by the end, you'll be as creamy as our pies and still have room for sloppy seconds. Order up! Gross.